Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today, we are test driving the all new 2025 Chevrolet Blazer EV, and this is an RS all wheel drive. And I gotta tell you, I've been looking forward to this test drive because I'm pretty excited about this car, if I'm honest. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside and out. We're gonna take it for a drive, and then I'll tell you what I really think. Okay, so let's get to this. The vehicle we have here is an all new vehicle for 2025. It is the Chevrolet Blazer EV, and this is an RS all wheel drive, which right now is the top of the line, but there will be a more high performance model coming out later that will be a more expensive model higher up the line than this one. But right now, this is it. And the price on this one is $55,000 and some change. But let's just be honest and round it up to 56 k because we're only a few bucks away from there. So it's 56 k this one, with the options that it has. So what is the Chevrolet Blazer EV? Well, this is not the same vehicle as the Chevrolet Blazer that you could also find on the Chevrolet showroom. It's not just an electric version of that. This is a completely different vehicle built on a completely different chassis platform. And it's also worth noting that this is the exact same chassis platform that underpins the Honda Prologue and the Acura ZDX EVs. Built at the same assembly plant, those manufacturers got together sort of in a partnership and all of them are built at the same place. They share most of the same hardware underneath they're essentially the same car, but for the exterior and interior styling and some of the eccentricities that make those brands different. But for the most part, they're the same vehicle. Now, when we talk about what is this, look at it. It's got Chevrolet DNA in its styling inside and out. The face looks right off of any other contemporary Chevrolet. It's sexy, it's athletic, it's aggressive looking. LED signature lighting, LED headlights, and there's no big grill because there's no gasoline engine to cool. It's just got a nice sort of pattern panel there. Coming around the corner, because we have a black car, these black 21 inch wheels really, they just look body color monotone on this. I like that, it's just very sporty. And when you look in those wheels, look at that, six lugs on there. You know why? Because this almost has exactly the same curb weight and the gross vehicle weight rating as a Chevrolet Silverado, which also happens to have six lugs. It's a big, heavy car. And while it's not that large size-wise, that big Ultium battery that sits under the floor weighs a lot. It's carrying that weight around. So that's one of the things about electric cars that we still haven't quite gotten away from is the fact that they weigh as much as a full-size truck, even though they're not quite that big. As we come around to the rear three-quarter view, you can really see how these short overhangs on this really give this a chunky, muscular look. And as you look at those rear hips, they're pretty tall. This is actually almost a three-quarter to a quarter proportion here when it comes to what that roof line looks like in terms of height compared to that quarter. I like it, it just gives it a nice look. And this is a pretty tall car. Coming around to the back, those LED taillights are pretty artistic looking and they really frame that rear view nicely. The hatch on this one, built-in spoiler up at the top, and this is a power hatch, as you'd expect at this price. The interior of the Blazer EV, especially on this RS, is pretty sexy and it has a lot to look at. I love the fact that they've given me a red and black interior. I just have a thing for red interiors. If you watch my videos for any time of length, every time I get one, I get pretty excited about it and it just looks good. The design of this interior is very much Chevrolet. It's very retro. Look at these vents these nice big round vents that are functional with a twist. They have that nice red accent in there to go with the rest of the interior. The quality materials in here is very good. It matches the price tag and the level of technology in here is also quite up there with the price tag. As I sit here, I've got a nice padded stitch steering wheel with red stitching and a completely digital instrument cluster ahead of me. And if you press the button here on the steering wheel, you can customize that in multiple different ways to display what you want. I've liked driving around this week with the navigation map on there, but it's a nice steering wheel, flat bottom with the RS logo on it. 
and off to the side a big huge infotainment screen which we'll talk about here separately below that a number of climate controls the most used stuff on the touch screen you will find some of the other climate controls and a whole menu for that but the basic use stuff is right here with knobs and buttons perfect down here in the center console a nice big storage cubby down here low you can put a big square tissue box down in there it's nice and deep and then here we have another nice deep huge storage area there's probably room in here for two rectangular tissue boxes that's my best way of describing the space there's just a lot of storage and versatility going on here there's a place to put your phone right here on the center console there is a wireless charger here bonus but i tend to like leaving it out here where i can keep an eye on it it's kind of hidden right here the seats i'm sitting in not the nicest seats. These are very similar to the ones I just had in the Buick Enclave. Maybe it's just a GM seat thing. They're very firm. They don't hold you. You're sitting on them, not in them. They're not uncomfortable, but they're just not the kind of seats that ah, you feel like you're sitting in them and what a nice thing that is. They're just seats, but they do have a pretty good range of adjustment. They are power seats and I do have memory settings here for the driver. They're heated and ventilated here as well. The rear seat of the Blazer EV is a pretty roomy place, as you can see. I've got plenty of space ahead of me, and these seats are set for my height about 5'8 with my tennis shoes on that I have right now. I've got about 6 to 7 inches ahead of my knees for space, so someone could really put this seat quite a bit further back, and I'd be just fine back here. The seating height here isn't too bad, in spite of the fact that the floor is higher, because we do have that queen-size mattress-size battery under the floor, so it has to be higher. My knees are perched up slightly, but it doesn't feel unnatural and uncomfortable. I'm not complaining about it. These seats back here are actually maybe a slight bit more comfortable than those up front. I have a little bit of side support here, and even the center passenger here has some bolsters on the side that would give them a little bit of comfort. On the back of the center console are vents, and there's also USB ports and buttons there because we have heated seats back here, a nice feature in the winter. Now these seats do fold down, 60-40 split as you would expect, and gives you a nice size cargo area there. It's not a 100% flat load floor, but these seats go down pretty well and give you a bit of an angle there at the front, but a lot of space. Even with them up, there's still plenty of space back there for your gear. Underneath that floor, a nice big deep storage area, and that's where you also keep your portable charger and any of the other doodads you like to carry around with you. There is no spare tire here. When it comes to rating this interior, I love the design. I love the quality and the workmanship. Not so happy with the comfort of these seats. Like I say, they're not deal breakers, but they're not the most comfortable seats in the business. There could be a few extra things here at this price, but for the most part, this is a nice first year, first try for the Blazer EV. This interior gets four out of five stars. The infotainment system here is huge. Just look at that. It is a big screen and it is almost fully featured. It has the latest Google backend that GM is putting in a lot of their cars. It's got built-in applications like Google Maps, Alexa, and a number of other things so that you can stay away from having to connect your phone to this with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And that's a good thing because this doesn't have that. This doesn't have Android Auto, nor does it have CarPlay, yuck. While I appreciate the fact that they've given me a Google backend here, I, I'm a little bit spun out about the fact that this doesn't offer Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That is a omission in today's car market, a big one. Sometimes when a car has those things and it just doesn't, it's not wireless, that gets complained about. But they're not here at all. And that was a decision General Motors made. I disagree with it. Big omission. Now the sound quality here is good. I'll give it that. The 360 degree camera, pretty good. I'll give it that. And actually using these menus and getting around works pretty good. But it's missing Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Omission, omission, omission. This system gets three and a half out of five stars. All right, my friends, finally time to take a drive. And because this is an EV, we are doing something we don't normally do. And we're gonna drive it in the city because most people that drive EVs spend most of their time driving in the city. Although with 279 miles of range, you can go pretty far out into the suburbs, even out on a, on a day trip, rural kind of trip. But here we are in the city. And one of the reasons I like doing this with a car like this is because 
it allows to sort of illustrate some of its driving behavior, which is notable. And in the particular case of this one, this has a one pedal drive setting, which allows me to use the power pedal both as accelerating and decelerating. So if I lift off the power pedal, it uses regenerative braking powerful enough that it actually will bring the car to a complete stop. And of course, the electronic braking system is involved in that to some degree, but it allows the car to sort of really be driven like a bumper car at the carnival. You can use one pedal and really only lift off and use that brake when you really need extra braking power. So we are in the RS all-wheel drive, which means we have an electric motor at the front and one at the rear. This has a total of 288 horsepower and 333 pound-feet of torque. This has, as I mentioned, a 279 mile range and in my week with it, I have found that that range is actually pretty accurate to what I've actually been seeing going through my driving. The amount of miles coming off of it, the amount of miles that I'm driving. So it's pretty accurate in that way. Power delivery is immediate as we always expect with an electric vehicle. It's got a fluid, quiet, dynamic whoosh and it does have an artificial sound that plays through the speakers. If you like that kind of thing, you can turn it off. I kind of think it's adorable, so on it is. Even though this does have all-wheel drive, it has a slight rear-wheel drive bias. And it is worth mentioning that this car is available in a rear-wheel drive version that has quite a bit more horsepower, quite a bit more range, and that's because it comes with a larger battery. This one has a slightly smaller battery so that the packaging with the motor and everything else that goes along with the all-wheel drive can work. I'm very impressed with this powertrain. It has a level of refinement that's quite good and I've quite enjoyed driving it this week. This powertrain gets four and a half out of five stars. Now to ride, drive, and handling. This is a vehicle that has a fully independent suspension front and rear. It's actually got a multi-link suspension front and rear, which is actually quite unique. As I mentioned, this is a very heavy car, and because of that, they have given this exceptionally stiff springs, which do play a role in how this rides, which is to say it's got a very firm, stiff ride. And this particular car does not have adjustable dampers. It doesn't have adaptive dampers. It's a fixed setting, which means it's a stiff ride. And so over rougher roads, over speed bumps and speed humps like this right here, you definitely know that you've gone over something. And particularly on rougher roads with these 21 inch wheels, it can be quite a rough ride. So there is that. If you get a lower trim grade with slightly smaller wheels, perhaps you might have a little bit more of a softer and, and less jarring ride. Road noise isn't too bad. and even though this is quite a heavy car that you, you know, you're going to feel the weight. There's no getting around that. The good news is that in spite of its weight, in spite of the stiff suspension settings, this feels like a solid car. It feels a quality and it's just got a nice driving demeanor. It's got a nice feel to its steering. And as a person who likes taking a car out on a back road, I like the fact that it's got a nice stiff suspension that gives me a responsive feedback. This chassis gets four out of five stars. Okay, my friends, it's finally time to talk about value. Is it worth the money and is it competitive? Well, first of all, there, there's quite a few competitors now in this class, the medium-sized electric crossover style vehicle class, Hyundai, Kia, Ford, just to name the first three that come to my mind. There's quite a few others if you're out there and you are looking in this size, power, price range. This one, $56,000, give or take, and this is actually class average right now. This doesn't stand out as being a lot of money or being low or high. And so when I look at all of the equipment that this has and the design and all of the things we talked about, I think we're in pretty good shape here. The quality is very good. Warranty coverage, not the highest in the business. Really, nobody can beat Kia or Hyundai unless they become Kia or Hyundai with their warranty. But the quality level here is good. It feels of quality and the appeal is here and the level of equipment that this has for the amount of money that we're talking about right here. Honestly, if this were a gasoline powered crossover and that was the only difference between this and the fact that it's electric, the price tag wouldn't be that much different. And so when I look at that, 
I think we're in pretty good space when it comes to competitiveness and is it worth the money. I put value at four and a half stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we are at 4.1 stars for the total review score. Pretty good. And you know what else? Because on my buy list, I like this. I like this car well enough that if I were searching, if I were buying myself a medium sized crossover SUV in the EV segment, I would totally buy this. I like it. I like the styling of it. I like the packaging. Uh, the performance is nice. Now, there is one caveat. I would buy the RS rear wheel drive, longer range, more horsepower, and it just, it's a little, little bit less money too. So <clears throat> there you have it. I would totally buy it on our I'd buy list. If you like what we do, you can see our latest video right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that right down there. Either way, stay tuned.